Coming up on OC News, a popular spring break location is under a state of emergency after police struggled to contain violent crowds of young people. Next time you visit your local Target for groceries or household items, you might also grab a COVID-19 vaccination. Multi-billionaire Kylie Jenner is being called cheap for initiating a GoFundMe campaign, and we'll have this latest inside scoop about a YouTube star facing serious sexual misconduct allegations, plus sports, and we'll tell you how you can get a free Krispy Kreme donut every day this year. OC News starts right now. Hello, and thank you for joining us today on OC News. I'm Jacob Hobson. And I'm Brianna Collins. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students here at Cal State Fullerton. This just in, Cal State Fullerton has announced that they will be holding an in-person graduation ceremony. Yes, that's right, in person. In an email to students minutes ago, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Carolyn Thomas, announced that seniors will be able to walk across stage with their families watching from home. Seniors, get your cap and gowns ready. Graduation 2021 is on. An 8 p.m. curfew continues tonight in Miami Beach. This after violent spring breakers caused damage to the area, police from multiple jurisdictions were called in to handle the unruly crowds. We turn now to OC News reporter Angelina Booth, who has the latest on what is going on in Miami. Miami Beach is under a state of emergency as large crowds of spring breakers continue to flock to the city. Miami Beach is a city known is a hot is a known hot spot for vacationers, most of them not abiding to COVID safety rules. Overwhelmed by the situation, the city of Miami Beach declared a state of emergency. The city imposed a mandatory curfew this weekend from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. The curfew did not hold up as people were still gathering after 8 p.m. Dan Gelbert, mayor of Miami Beach, said the crowds have become more than they can handle. It feels uh, in some ways like our city is a tinder right now. It's not uh, just about not wearing masks and, and, and physical distancing. It's also uh, some of the folks that are coming are coming with bad intentions. So there's been brawls and, and even gunplay. And when you have these levels of crowds, you can't really manage unless you have enormous policing. And all that uh, mix creates a lot of peril and a lot of concern. And I do worry. The entertainment district and Ocean Drive in Miami Beach have been met with violence due to the abundance in crowds. Fights, gunfire, stampedes, and damage to restaurants have occurred. Miami Beach police have responded to this issue and have arrested more than 1,000 people. Miami Beach police shot pepper balls into the crowds this weekend to try and disperse the crowds and to try and force the curfew. On Sunday, city officials voted to extend the curfew into April in hopes of getting the chaos under control. Florida does not have a mandatory mask mandate and just recently opened the state back up after a year of a long COVID shutdown. People around the nation are gathering in solidarity to stop Asian hate after a recent hate crime in Atlanta that resulted in six Asian women being killed. Reporter Stephanie Mejia has the story. Last week, six Asian women were killed across three massage parlors in Atlanta, which has kick-started. Over the weekend, several Stop Asian Hate rallies and marches took place across the country following the deadly Atlanta spa shootings. Vigils were held for the eight people that were killed across the three massage parlors in Atlanta, six were Asian women. This crime comes amid a rise in anti-Asian American and Pacific Islander crimes in the country. This isn't new to our community and it's a, a period of awakening for America um, that's been our lived experience. According to Stop AAPI Hate National's report, they received a total of 3,795 reports of anti-Asian hate incidents from March 2020 to February 2021. really started Stop AAPI Hate because of the surge in anti-Asian racism as COVID was being racialized. In a series of tweets, former President Donald Trump referred to the coronavirus as the Chinese virus. He also tweeted that the world received a bad gift from China. 
people will continue to gather and take a stand against the violence and racism that many communities continue to face in this country. I want to come out today to support the cause. I want to raise awareness. I want everyone to know we're not your token Asian. We're not your Asian friends. Um, we're everywhere, and it, it's our turn to be heard. Big news in today's COVID world, as Target has announced they will be partnering with CVS Pharmacy to bring COVID-19 vaccines to more than 600 stores across the world. COVID-19 vaccines continue to be in high demand as cases begin to decrease across the U.S. Target announced its effort to assist in making COVID vaccines more widely available to all of those who are eligible by partnering with more than 600 CVS locations across the globe. So far, there have been 5.1 million people fully vaccinated in California, which makes up almost 13% of the vaccinated population in the U.S. This makes California the most vaccinated state in the country and will continue to rank the highest due to the help of Target and CVS. Target looks to even provide more support in the next upcoming months by offering vaccines to team members and guests within stores. Fitting rooms will become available to CVS at select stores to host vaccine appointments. Target's slogan, always taking care, is becoming more than just a motto as they continue to make a heroic effort in stopping the spread of COVID-19. After interviewing about a hundred after interviewing about 100 jurors, the Minneapolis court has narrowed it down to 14 jurors for the Derek Chauvin trial. Reporter Daryl Forges has a story. There are several rulings laid out by Judge Peter Cahill in Friday's jury selection. First, Judge Cahill has decided not to push back or move the trial to a separate location. This after Derek Chauvin's attorney asked for the trial to be pushed back or moved after last Friday's announcement of a $27 million civil settlement between George Floyd's family and the city of Minneapolis. The judge says, quite frankly, look, no matter what happens during this situation, there will always be some type of publicity before the trial starts because of how big this case is known, not only in the state and all across the country, but also all across the globe. The judge also has decided to admit some evidence from a 2019 arrest of George Floyd. And we also have a 13th juror selected that's been identified as a white female in her 50s. So at last we told you that 14 jurors were needed to complete this process, but the judge has decided to add another juror. So overall next week they will have hopefully a total of 15 jurors in time for the trial that's set to start on March 29th. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, I'm Daryl Forges. Here is Sandy Ramirez with our political news. After being banned from Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, former President Donald Trump is making a reappearance on social media. In two to three months, former President Donald Trump will be launching his own social media platform that his longtime advisor, Jason Miller, says will, quote, attract tens of millions, end quote. Many of Trump's followers have been waiting for their leader to have an alternative plan to reach them after his actions of inciting the U.S. Capitol riots on January 6 left him permanently suspended across multiple social media platforms, along with the loss of five American lives. Joe Biden pledged in campaign promises to eliminate the death penalty in the federal system, but one case has been pushed to the Supreme Court to make sure it is not an option. <laughs> the Supreme Court announced that it will be reconsidering whether or not the Boston Marathon bomber Jahar Sanarov will be receiving the death penalty after his attack on three people that killed three people and injured 264 others back in 2013. Sonarov's defense team has denied all accusations of his participation in the attack and argued that it was his brother's influence after the First Circuit Court of Appeals in Boston threw out the death penalty sentence. The Trump administration was quick to appeal the case to the Supreme Court, trying to attain a capital sentence. The justice released a one-sentence order that will reconsider reinstating Sonarov's death sentences. The U.S. announced today sanctions against two Chinese for, quote, serious human rights abuse, end quote, against we are Muslims, along with the European Union, the United Kingdom, and Canada. 
The U.S. Treasury Department continued to state their commitment to hold the Chinese government accountable for their human right abuses. The Secretary of the Party Committee of the Xinjiang Production, Wang Zhanzhen, and the Director of the Xinjiang Public Security Bureau, Cheng Mingguo, are both responsible for persisting against a U.S. executive order that protects against human right abuse or corruption, both leaders engaging in acts that include torture and arbitrary detention. The Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, called these campaigns by Chinese officials a genocide against Uyghurs. The U.S. Treasury Department announced the U.S. remains committed to stand in solidarity against human rights violations. Many restrictions have been imposed on media coverage. Here's more on the U.S.-Mexico border crisis. With newfound hopes from the Biden administration, a rise in migration has surged as Central and South American immigrants attempt to enter the country. While these migrants are seeking better lives for themselves and children, they face many obstacles as the humanitarian crisis on the U.S.-Mexico border continues. More than 14,000 migrant children are being held in federal custody at juvenile detention facilities. Last Friday, a group of bipartisan senators took a trip to visit these facilities and are usually accompanied by White House press or reporters, but this time they were not. Representative Ilhan Omar gave her opinion on why coverage is critical. I think that there are some failures that are taking place. Uh, and it's really important um, for us to show the basic humanity and treat the causes of, of migration in the region. Um, it means, you know, addressing the root causes of, of the situation. It means dealing with our cruel and contradictory foreign policy that arms the very states. Now, President Joe Biden and his administration are being accused of lacking transparency over media coverage at the southern U.S. border. The White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki responded. Children uh, presenting at our border who are fleeing violence, who are fleeing prosecution, who are fleeing terrible situations is not a crisis. If this isn't a humanitarian crisis, then critics are questioning what is. And that's all for politics. Back to you at the Anchor Desk. The Biden administration has been refusing to call the border a crisis. The administration is trying to control the biggest border surge in two decades, with 4,900 children in border protection custody and with over 800 children in custody for more than 10 days. Democratic Congressman Henry Carr leaked these photos of children sleeping on floors and in a crowded facility in Texas. So in a big, large room, she says that there was about 200, 250 people. The men are separated from the women. She was in the area where women were with children. Roberta Jacobson, the National Security Council official overseeing border issues, was to travel to Mexico on Monday to jointly develop an effective and humane plan, plan of action to manage migration. Technology has allowed everything from groceries to chicken nuggets to be available at your fingertips. And now, they'll be bringing COVID tests to you. Find out what app is making waves with their newest delivery service. Now in tech news, DoorDash is starting to offer COVID-19.
Now in tech news, DoorDash is trying to offer COVID-19 tests. Plus, how you could earn $2,400 for giving up electronics for a day. Here's Angelina with more. DoorDash is delivering much more than your dinner during these trying times. The company is partnering with Everly Well and Vault Health to deliver two, diff two different at-home COVID-19 tests that will arrive at your door the same day you deliver them. The deliveries are only happening in cities that contain a Dash Mart convenience store. Unfortunately, that only includes a handful of cities at the moment, none of which are in Southern California. However, DoorDash is continuing to open up new locations into 2021. The service offers a nasal swab through Everly Well for $109 or saliva test through Vault Health for $119. And you can get your results back to you as little as a day. Facebook is continuing to make good on its promise of expanding into more spaces in the tech world. Facebook Reality Labs is the arm of the company in charge of the virtual and augmented reality products like Colas Rift. Their latest showing is wristband that works with a, with a person's neural pathways in order to figure out what it's supposed to do. Basically, you will be able to move your hand and the wristband will read the signal being sent from your brain to mimic it on the screen. Facebook showed off the concept video for this new piece of tech today, showing users typing on an invisible keyboard, as well as turning on a lamp with a simple gesture. In a blog post, Facebook also describes the tech as a tool to be used as another way for people to communicate with each other. For example, the wristband's vibrational abilities can potentially be used to create different feedback representing things like emojis. Facebook is not the first to use this kind of technology in a future product. However, its development could still lead to strides in the realm of augmented reality. What if you could get paid to ditch electronics for the day? Reviews.org will pay $2,400 to participants who take part and successfully complete their challenge of going screen free for a full 24 hours. The company is looking for people who typically rely heavily on electronics to live their life. Contestants will be given a safe to lock up smaller items like phones. Participants also get a $200 Amazon gift card to buy items that will help them get through the challenge while still staying productive. They'll also do a review of the items purchased after the challenge is completed. To find out more about how you can get involved, visit reviews.org. That's all for tech. Now we head over to Jacob, who has a look at a group of influencers that are in hot water and the latest update on this year's Oscar Awards. YouTube star David Dobrik has been accused of sexual assault by former Vlog Squad member Seth Francois. The Vlog Squad is known on the internet as a group of friends that vlog their daily lives. Business Insider published an article with an, with an anonymous woman alleging that she had been raped by former Vlog Squad member Dom Zaglaitis. She alleged that Dobrik filmed her entering a room with Dom. She said she was under the influence and couldn't give consent. Since then, several of David's sponsors have decided to cut ties with him, and he has left the board of his co-founded photo app, Dispo. The Oscars are rolling out the red carpet. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences announced in an email that this year's award show will be fully in person. There will be no virtual option for Hollywood's best. The goal is to provide a safe and carefree evening, but the Academy made it clear that no pajamas are allowed. Kylie Jenner is under fire after asking her Instagram followers to donate to a GoFundMe for makeup artist Samuel Rauda. Jenner posted an Instagram story seeking prayers and donations. Since then, fans asked why Kylie, who is worth millions, didn't pay the bill herself. The 23-year-old entrepreneur defended herself on Instagram today, saying that while she and Samuel no longer have a personal connection, they worked together in the past and he's the sweetest. She says she doesn't understand how everything got so twisted. Coming up, our Titan women's softball team continues its winning streak. And we'll tell you how you can get a free Krispy Kreme donut for all of 2020, 2021. Yum. We'll be right back. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. 
Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to OC News. Now I'm sending over to Adam with sports at Goodwin Field. How's it going, Titan sports fans? My name's Adam Miranda. I'm standing in front of Godwin Field and Anderson Family Field, home of the future renovation sites. But first, on to our top story. Deshaun Watson is now facing six more additional lawsuits of sexual misconduct. That brings the total up to 13 cases. Deshaun Watson's been making headlines all season long after first demanding a trade and now for sexual misconduct. One of those cases has alleged sexual misconduct as recently as March 21st. Now on to some sad news for Lakers fans. Elgin Baylor, the former Lakers star, passed away earlier today. Elgin Baylor was a 14-year veteran who made 11 All-Star appearances. Baylor also passed away from natural causes, and he was 86. He's also often credited as the first high flyer in the NBA, giving way for Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Now onto the reason why I'm out here, the softball and baseball teams. The Cal State Fullerton women's softball team went 18 and 11 after winning five of their last five games. They just swept UC Davis in a three game series and they're on to their fifth consecutive title. Hopefully they can capture it. Now on to the baseball team. The baseball team had a big weekend as well, playing UC Santa Barbara, splitting the series two and two. They won the game on, in walk-off fashion after Isaiah Garcia hit a sacrifice fly to score Zach Liu in the bottom of the 10th inning, giving the Titans a 10 to nine victory. Now, Santa Barbara is also ranked 21 in, 21st in the nation, and they're looking to capture their, uh, their division title as well. But Cal State Fullerton made a big statement this weekend. Now, baseball is often known as America's favorite pastime, and we all love to play it. But one team is taking it back to its roots. Baseball is referred to as America's favorite pastime, but the game has changed so much since it first began. One team, however, is taking it back to when it we first good? began the Fullerton Fireknockers, and as you can see right behind me, they're getting ready for practice. The Vintage Baseball Association was founded in February of 1996 to pay tribute to the game once forgotten. In 2017, the SoCal Vintage Baseball League began play. Two years later, the Fireknockers founder, Rich Big Train McIntosh, decided he wanted a new way to play the game he loved. I'm a baseball guy, I love the history of baseball, um, watch baseball all the time, play baseball. Uh, we were really tired of playing softball, and this was something that was more baseball, but we weren't playing with the younger guys in like the 18 and over league. Um, that, it's got a little bit of historical, you know, value to it, which is nice. Current players enjoy getting lost playing the game from the decades forgotten. We do our best to use our nicknames and stick to all that. Um, there's no batting gloves out here. It's, you kind of get lost in everything, and um, I play this game much differently than I played hardball in my life. Even new players are excited about the opportunity to relearn the game. Uh, well, I'm a historian. Um, I actually graduated with my master's from Cal State Fullerton uh, just this last uh, January here. And so that's, I mean, that right there, you know, with baseball and, and being a historian, how could I not love the game? <laughs> Everything is authentic to the period, from the rules, uniform, and even equipment. The uniforms maker KNP Weaver has worked on major Hollywood films, most notably the popular movie A League of Their Own, about the Women's Baseball League of 1943. The Fire Knockers are ready to start 2021 back in 1886, and one thing is certain, this team is a blast there you go. from the past. In Buena Park, Adam Miranda, OC News. Thank you, Adam. Another new incentive for folks to get the COVID-19 vaccine is here. Krispy Kreme joins the effort to encourage the public to get their COVID-19 vaccine shot. All you need to do is bring your vaccination card to any participating Krispy Kreme donut location and get yourself a treat. This, this sweet promotion is going on until the end of this year. 
The freebie is unlimited to vaccinators anytime and any day with no purchase required. If you weren't planning to get the vaccine, perhaps this will change your mind. Talk about a sweet incentive. All right, Jacob, time for us to get our vaccine and our donut. That's right, Brianna. <laughs> That'll do it for us tonight here at OC News. Remember, the news never stops, so be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. From all of us here at OC News, I'm Brenna Collins, and have a good night, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday at 5 p.m.